right, so what we're going to look at in this lesson is how to find the surface area of rectangular prisms. Surface area of a rectangular prism. So surface area is just the sum of the areas of all of the outside surfaces. So if you take a rectangular prism, which is what this is, and you find the area of all of the outside sides and add those together, that would be the surface area. It's what you would calculate if you were trying to cover this with something. You want to know how much material you would need to cover the whole outside of the object. So typically, the first time you learn about surface area, they teach you about nets. And so this is a net. This is where you basically tear the box open and lay out all its pieces. So here are the two end pieces here. So if I was to fold those up and fold this over, it would create the box. Or if you look at the box here, there are six sides here. There's a top, there's a bottom, there's a right side, a left side, and then a front and a back. And if you come over here, here's the back, here's the front, here's the bottom, here's the top, here's the left side and the right side. And so if you found the area of each of those pieces and add them together, you would get the surface area. But in this lesson, it's about using a formula to find it instead of using a net. So let me show you how this formula works. So here's the formula. SA stands for surface area. So it says surface area equals P times H plus 2 times B. And I usually call this big B because if you've done other area, like for instance, the area of a rectangle is small B times H, where small B stands for the base and H stands for the height. Big B means something else. So I usually will call this big B. So let's look at what these things mean. So the P stands for the perimeter of the base. The H stands for the height of the prism, and it's measured as the distance between the bases. And big B stands for the area of the base. So if you notice, all three of these talk about a base. So step one, this is really one of the most important steps, is to choose a base. So choose a base. So let's, let's talk real quick about how you make a rectangular prism. So a rectangular prism, the way you make it, is you start with a rectangle, all right, and then create a copy of that rectangle. All right, so I'll make an exact copy of that rectangle. And then you just connect the corners of it. Well, this rectangle is what's known as the base. So this is the base of the prism. Okay, so if I was to connect the corners here, I'm not going to be able to draw very straight lines probably. That's actually pretty good for me. If I was to connect the corners, you get a rectangular prism. And keep in mind, what we started with was this rectangle and this rectangle. So that would be the base of our prism. It's how we created the prism. Now, with a rectangular prism, you can do that with any of the sides. So it doesn't have to be the front and the back. Let's, uh, let's let me do the left side here. Right, so the left side looks kind of like this. And then here's the right side. Oh, that's not very good. And that looks kind of like this. So this is the left side, this side over here, and this is the right side. Excuse my artwork. So in this case, this would be my base, right? And there's two of them, right? They're identical. And now if I connect the corners together, then I'll end up with my prism. All right, so in this case, I'm using these sides as my base. So the last thing is I could actually use the top and the bottom is my base. I'm really stretching it here with my art skills and my erasing skills. All right, so let's, let's try the top. So the top would look like uh, something like this. Let's see, got that. Got that. That's actually pretty good for me. Uh, like that. Is that comfy? 
rectangular prism. So, I can create a prism. Start with two bases. They're identical shapes. In this case, they're rectangles because it's a rectangular prism. If it's a triangular prism, you would just take two identical triangles and connect those together. That would give you a triangular prism. So, in a rectangular prism, I can choose whatever sides I want to be my bases. All right. Well, This front and this back to our bases. But again, it doesn't matter. But this is step number one. It's one of the most important steps because all of these have to do with your base. All right? So if someone else chooses a different base than those two, they're going to get different answers for these values. But when they plug it into the formula, they'll end up with the same surface area. Okay, so did you hear that? If you chose different bases than the two I chose, you'll get different values for P, H, and big D. But when you plug them into the formula, you'll get the same answer for the surface area. All right, so let's just go through the formula here. P pick your bases. It's really not that difficult. So P stands for the perimeter of the base. The perimeter is the distance around this. That's the perimeter. You just add up all the sides. And it doesn't matter if I use the front or the back because they're identical. So this side right here is 3. This side is given to me over here. That's 4. So the perimeter is going to be 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4. Right? 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4. That's 14 feet. That's the perimeter of my base. Okay? Not hard math. Pretty easy. And the way we describe the height of the prism is it's how far apart the bases are from each other, the distance between them. So that's this distance right here. That's the height of the prism, which is the same for all of these. All of these are the same length. So how far apart the bases are from each other is the height. And that's given to me right here. So the height, I don't even have to calculate it. I just read it right off of the picture. And then the last we need, big D, stands for the area of the base. Well, this base is a rectangle. So we just do base times height. Again, this is small b, so small b is base. Big B is area of the base. And so I'm just finding the area of this rectangle. So this side's 3, and this side we already said was 4, given to you over here. So we would just do 3 times 4 get 12 square feet, where area is always square units. All right, so all I did was choose a base. I found the perimeter of that base, 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4. And I found out how far apart the bases were from each other. That was this measurement here, the 7. And then I found the area of the base, 3 times 4, which was 12. And now we're just going to plug these into the formula. P times H plus 2 times big B. So P was 14. H was 7. Plus 2 times big B, which is 12. So make sure you follow order of operations here. So do the multiplication before the addition. So we're going to multiply, multiply, and then we're going to add. So 14 times 7, that would be 98. 2 times 12 is 24. We add those together, and we get the surface area is 122 square feet. All right, so let's look at another example of this. All right, so what's step number one? Step number one is to choose a base. So you can use, choose any two pairs of sides you want. You could use the left side and the right side. You could use the top and the bottom. You could use the front and the back. Let's choose top and bottom. So again, these are identical shapes. And all you'd have to do is draw those two rectangles. Right? 
connecting edges together, and you end up with this rectangular prism. So what are the three things first the perimeter of the base? So add up the four sides of this. So this side is four, this side is three, so we have four plus three plus four plus three. Or you could do four plus three times two. Right, so the perimeter is 14 and a half times 12. I've been thinking about something else that was 12. So 14 inches, that's the distance around the base. The H, remember, that's just how far apart the bases are from each other. So that's this distance here. And again, all of these lines are the same length. So they're only going to give it to you on one of them. So there's four of them, right? But they give you it the height right there. And they're all the same. So the height of the prism is 5 inches. The B is the area of the space. Again, this is a rectangle. So we're going to do B times H. This is small b. So that would be 4 times 3. 3 times 12 squared. And now all plug those into the formula. B times H plus 2 times big B. And then just make sure we follow PEMDAS. So P, the perimeter of the base was 14. The height was 5. Plus 2 times the area of the base was 12. Again, multiply, multiply, and then divide. So 14 times 5 is 70. Times 12 is 24. So that's 70 plus 24 gives us the surface area, which is 94 inches squared. So now remember, you could just go find the area of all six sides of this and add them together and get 94. But once you get used to using this formula, I think you'll find that this is a quicker, easier way to do it. And this formula works for all types of prisms. So rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, square pyramids, I mean square prisms, trapezoidal prisms. So like a trapezoidal prism, you just take two identical trapezoids, connect all the corners together, and you end up with a trapezoidal prism. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you. If so, give it a like and a subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment if you have any. Until next time.